Can everybody hear me? Maybe this time? I don't I don't. hear you now. Hallelujah. Okay. By the We're, way, your outfit's really, really freaking cute. Thank you. I'm in my bata. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. And and side note, I really feel like I, we're gonna have to start taking donations to get Elba an iPad or something to do these things. Cause I mean, I think it's just more so my my cell service isn't good where I'm at, and you know, until they like fix the Wi-Fi, I'm kind of stuck on. I'm kind of stuck with 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 cell service. Thinking about but Hallelujah, we made it. <laughs> we did. I'm still trying to figure out the layout thing. Do you see the option now that you're the host? I I do not see any Please. kind of right. option. Oh, can uh -huh. you set shenanigans as a moderator? I oh you did already. I did, yeah, I did. Hold on, I'm pressing buttons. So. That's what I did last time, and I was like, "There's, know. there's, it, it's probably like a really simple way." <laughs> no, and we're a little pen de house that we can't figure. It out. I don't, I don't know, man. I see the interact button. I see like pose. My other where's account he now to work? I'm gonna tell her to come back. Like we can actually do it, do this thing this time. <laughs> yeah, let me. Hi, yo. Let me message her and message. Uh... Oh, oh, oh! I think I figured it out. How'd you do? How'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to guess. And then um, once everything pops up, there's like a setting icon. And then from there, you can go from panel to grid. See, that didn't happen last time. I was clicking everything. 20 minutes later. I know that when we talked last, we started with kind of like, because um, the generational trauma obviously started when colonization happens in 1492. And then you fast forward a bunch of years to more like modern times. Mm -hmm. now elders in the community um you know kind of coming together this kid like anyway <laughs> um elders in the community coming together and kind of like going to powwows and meeting up and gathering and stuff like that um there were a couple of different uh yukayakeno at the time but one of the the ones that most people talk about is nacion taina um, that one ended up splitting, and we have, like, the Yuka Yekeno that we have today, in addition to some newer ones that have come in. And, um, you know, because of, I believe, just, like, historical inaccuracies and this, like, romanticiz romanticization, however you say that word, um, there's this, like, false notion of nation um, being that, like, everybody Taino was under one umbrella when the reality is like even back then just like it is now Yuka Yekeno are sovereign they kind of operate independently and of course we come together for events as need be but that's pretty much it and um what else you know that there's been like bad blood and we're even seeing it in some recent drama that's been going on uh so I didn't know if you guys wanted to um, kind of go more into that or jump into another an, another one of the topics that were that we came up with while we were discussing this bigger topic. I'm okay to start wherever, and I don't know if Bohio has a preference or if she just wants to like get started on either her perspective or her experience or? Um, yeah, I mean, I can speak about my experience back in, in when I first really actively started to look into um, connecting with other Tainos, which um, 
was back in the 90s, even though I had been raised by my, you know, my parents, my mother, not so much, but my father was very big on, you know, what we were and making sure that we knew we had Taino blood and we had European blood and we had African blood. And, you know, he knew a lot about the Tainos that was kind of like everybody else was like, oh, the Tainos are extinct. And he was like, no, we're still here. <laughs> Even back then in the, you know, 70s, 80s kind of thing. Um, but it wasn't until the 90s that he really, that I really started to look into becoming a part of a group. And um, within months, that quickly went <laughs> went downhill because I happened to start researching and connecting during the period of time that the the nación and all of the other groups kind of fractured from each other um, which was interesting to watch as an outsider um more interesting to come back many years later and see that they're still fracturing amongst the community mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to be able to heal Mm -hmm. you know so now it's like what do we do to heal this <laughs> mm -hmm. right and that's what I was just going to say like from your experience of having been in and being raised with the ideals of your father and, and, and all of that as we discussed previously like and your long history and being involved in the community both like in Yucayaques and um, outside of them what do you think like causes some of that fracture because you didn't mention, like, you know, not healing the issues. Um, I think there's a, as we're reclaiming everything that was lost, I think there's such a desire to be the first to claim it, if that makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. everybody wants to be the first person on the moon, for lack of better words. And... I think that because we've spent so much of our past with um, people telling us we didn't exist and the Dainos don't exist and they went extinct. And, you know, for me, I remember growing up and always wishing I had, um, you know, how folks have like, you know, they have antiques that they pass down to their children and their children's children and they have stories and we didn't have that. All of that was erased. Mm -hmm. um, so now I think that as people started to realize that the Taino, the Taino people were still here and still alive, they started to grasp onto the whatever they got and mm -hmm. making it theirs. This is mine, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that causes a lot of- Get trouble. in the house. <laughs> it's, it's this, that's real life parenting, y'all. <laughs> that's either a child or a cat. That's, I don't know which one, but it's somebody. Uh, yeah, so everybody wants to be the first and, and that kind of, um, the need to kind of like stand in, I guess, lack of better knowledge, to stand in righteousness, right? Like the way I'm doing it is right, or I learned to do this, this one, and all of this stuff. We, like, um, I know we have spoken about how that definitely plays a, a role in this, and that kind of just keeps rolling forward to the people who are reconnecting now, who are much newer to the movement, are, um, you know, being affected by that. How do you think that, you know, all of that history from the beginning, moving forward, and and people kind of, you know, fighting to keep what's there, how is that affecting the reconnecting people now? I think the, the main way that it affects reconnecting people is that they become afraid to connect because they see everything that's going on within the community itself, you know, and this one's over here and they're angry because of things that happened 20 years ago. And this one's angry because of things that happened, you know, yesterday. And all of that is being publicly displayed because of social media mm -hmm. and people see that and it scares them off. I think that's, that's a big, a big, problem that I don't know um, I don't know if it's ever going to get fixed honestly you know mm -hmm. I think the healing has to come from 
the elders and the older people in the community first, and then it will trickle down to the younger, um, newer people. And, and by younger and older, I don't mean age-wise. I mean how long they've been reconnected. In, right. So it has to start from people who started everything, and it will trickle down to the people who are coming in new. Because right now, the people who started everything continue in their anger, and it's just, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a tidal wave. Yeah. I think that's something that we can all we all agree with. I don't know if Inaru has anything she wants to say or add or ask or anything. I know she's just sitting over there being really cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the healing does have to start with the folks that have been within the community for a pretty long time because that's where a lot of the animosity, and it trickles down. It does trickle down. But I, I did want to mention this, especially for new folks that are coming in that are newly reconnecting. Um, you know, if you can help it, if, if you have it within your capacity, Please, um, you know, just stick with it. Keep with your own, you know, your, your own truth, you know, and don't shy away. It's like, oh, my gosh, this this community has so much drama because guess what? Every community has drama. You look at any community and has drama. Any native, you know, I have yep. some folks tell me, oh, man, that thing, you know, it's so crazy. I said, let me tell you something. If you go into other um, indigenous and native communities, you'll see just as much drama with one person talking about this person, kikiing about this person, or what, or what have you. You know, and it just happens. It's real. It's for us. It's really, really growing pains and reconnecting and and things like that, and trying to heal our generational trauma. We're trying to heal this, you know, and it's and it's it's going to be ugly. It's not going to be all pretty, and we're not going to have this little cute regalia with, you know, our our feather headdress. You know, like, it's not going to... That's all the trappings of it. But the real work we're doing right now, mm -hmm. we the have field. to do the real work. And mm -hmm. it's hard. It's a hard journey. I hope I hope you guys heard me. No, we heard you for sure. Yeah. And I want to we did. what you were saying, because you were like, you know... For newly reconnecting people, they should stay despite the drama and you know, try, you know, working around that. But as an addendum to that, aside from like staying despite the drama, don't get involved in the drama. Make your own opinion, and that's one of the things that I can say from having been around. Like I don't know, it's been a while, like independently, and then probably with a Yukayak and me, like three years, four years, but whether you got yet longer, you know, before that. But really, it's important for anyone reconnecting and even people who have been connecting for a while. If you really stop and think about it, you may have allowed yourself to be influenced by the way that, like, people you've become close to or you consider a mentor in the movement, you know, people who they get along with or who they don't get along with, you know, you kind of, like, align yourself, right? And I think it's really important that exactly individually as a person um you know don't fall prey to that when you see like someone not getting along with someone or whatever like form your own opinion stand in your own like identity in your own being and get all the facts before you formulate an opinion about somebody or a situation because as you know bohio trading post said in inaru and they've been around a lot longer you know, in, in the movement to me, um, you know, they, you will encounter long, late views and people who don't get along and, you know, that projects that were trying to be done and then they fell apart and everyone's mad at everybody, you know, in dealing with it. And then that influences the younger people trying to, to learn and get involved because everything is becomes, it's all with this slanted, jaded view. And so I think it's really important as part of the healing process that, you know, we understand two things, that we have to formulate our own opinions, you know, get everything for ourselves, and two, understand it's not a linear process. And I think that's 
lot of people struggle with, with the concept of healing, that it is, um, you know, A to B, and we're just going to, like, knock it all out of the park. It's not. It is these kinds of things and trying different methods and situations to, you know, close those gaps or, or mend those wounds, so to say. Yeah, I know for for myself, I could have completely bounced out of the community back in the 90s and not have even made an attempt to come back. But when I came back, when I came back, I made it a point to um, keep an open mind and get to know people throughout the entire community. And I still hear all the chaos and the drama and all of the stuff that's going on. But I try to separate myself from that because if you get, like you said, if you get too involved in it um, or you jump into becoming a part of that drama, you're just going to end up being like, well, I don't want to do this anymore. And then, you know, it, it ruins it for you. So you have to kind of step back away from uh, the situation and remember that it's not your drama. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I, I agree. Like it's really important. And as you know, there are lots of situations, that I've walked into and people that I've met and, um, you know, people that everyone in this, well, I know for sure, at least six people in here know, uh, you know, and just because there's like bad blood between people doesn't mean you can't have like relationships on, on, you know, with either one of them. It's just kind of knowing that like you have to respect their pain and, you know, not, not make it your own. And you know all of that. I'm just looking at our notes from yesterday. You know, do you have anything no else you, want to, you want to say? You just saying it's all about being discerning you know listening to yourself and trusting yourself and trusting your um, intuition you know when it comes to like some folks you know you know uh people can make promises Hold for on. this or that on one second people are saying you're i can hear you just fine but everyone else is saying that you're that like it's my audio like yeah but i hear you fine. i can hear her just fine too yeah i can hear you too okay can you hear me now? I just took the headphones I could, off. I was hearing you just fine. It's the people in the chat who kept saying that they, they weren't able to hear you. I had no problem. They're saying now that they okay. can. It was the headphones. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, uh, just, just to backtrack what I was saying, um, if you guys didn't hear me, uh, I was just saying that, you know, you, I was just piggybacking on what they were saying. You know, uh, speak your, you have to live your own truth. You have to continue on your path, on your journey. You have to be very discerning, okay, because not everything is roses, of course. You know, people are coming into this community or people are already existing in this community with their own traumas, right? Um, even on top of layered with the ancestral traumas, but with also their own traumas, you know? So just like any other community, and that's the thing, because people say, oh, man, those Tainos are crazy, but guess what? Everybody crazy. Mm -hmm. Everybody. It's in every community. I'm telling you, you're not, the grass is never greener on the other side. It's just not. Mm -hmm. So you just have to kind of like, you know, if, if this is the path you want to stay on, it's a hard, it's a hard path. It's not easy because people are going to make fun of you. People are going to say that you're a pretendian. They're going to call you a rabble. They're going to call you anti-black. They're going to call you anti-Spanish. They're going to call you all this stuff. Okay? And you know you none of that. You know you none of that. Because this one thing about these Taino that are uh, that are here, present, I know they embrace all their ancestors. Okay? They embrace all their ancestors. And you should too. Don't let anybody else tell you any different. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm going. Like I said, we had notes from one. Hold, hold on, one second. Are you back with us? 
I am. Just just give me a second because I want to make sure I'm connected to my parents' internet and not going to be all over the place like I was earlier. I'm sorry. You're fine. I can keep I'm going. trying to get my shit together. It's okay. I got, I got you. Don't worry. So the other thing I wanted to kind of circle back to, and I think it's something that Inaru, Elba, and I have all spoken about in the last few days because we've seen it kind of coming up in different ways is really the difference uh, Bohio, if you want to kind of touch on that in your experience and how important like understanding that is older versus um, elder. I'm trying to read your note, Elba. You said older does not equal elder because of ego. Was that your? I think that's what your note says. Does that mean after? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, and you guys kind of already touched on it though, as far as like you know formulating your own opinions and mm -hmm. all that jazz that there's drama everywhere there's ego everywhere too mm. so um i didn't know if boyo wanted to elaborate more yeah i think that a lot of people misconstrue the the elder and older thing and they automatically think that the person because of their age they're automatically an elder and just because they're an older person doesn't mean they necessarily know what they're talking about. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people will take advantage of that, of that fact that, mm -hmm. you know, well, I'm older, I'm an elder. And it's like, well, not exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important for people to know the difference between mm -hmm. being older and being an elder. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to, I'm, I'm looking through, through the list. I know we talked about like cognitive dissonance and the refusal to change. So I guess like um, if you want to touch on that, because I know that that was a big thing when we spoke about the, um, you know, how the refusal to change impacts generational trauma. I think they're, they're trying to, to clean a lot of Taino people. And I keep, I keep saying they, which in actuality, it's us, you know, as a community, we're all trying to cling to 1492. You know what I mean? That pre-colonialization period of time. And you have a lot of people that are stuck in the, well, the Tainos didn't look that way. Well, the Tainos didn't dress that way. Well, the Tainos didn't have hair like that. Or the Tainos didn't do this or that. And it does a disservice to the community because if we look at any indigenous community, they have modernized with the times. They don't mm -hmm. stay, unless you're on an island in the middle of nowhere and you're one of those uncontactable communities, you mm -hmm. have been modernized. And so mm -hmm. we as a community have to modernize ourselves also, not to mention that you know, we are a mix of all sorts of things. So some of us are whiter, some of us are, are darker skin. You know, we just mm -hmm. have to let we have to kind of, it's not to completely let go of our history and our past. It's to bring it into the here and now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, and I think that that, oh, Inaru, did you want to say something? My mouth. I'm just like trying to <laughs> stuff like my dinner. Don't, don't worry. The storm just came in <laughs> last night. <laughs> so. But, but yeah, um, you were just, I'm oh, sorry, you were just talking about, um, you know, the generational trauma and everything like that as far as, um, I just lost my train of thought because I'm, I'm getting old. Refusal to change, like the, the thing that we were talking about, about refusal to change. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a senior moment. Um, no, so the thing is that, um, you know, that's that's the thing because we're not in 1492 we're in 2022 we're using live we're using internet and everything like that if anybody tells you any different that oh no we shouldn't do this or we shouldn't do that i mean again use your just dis um discernment you always want to use your discernment and everything i mean if it doesn't really sit with you very well especially with your research maybe talk to other el older elders talk to some elders or talk to folks that have been in the community for a long time. Um, and then, you know, you make a determination on there. You know, honey, if you want to, if you want to wear a shawl, um, as part of your regalia, wear a shawl. 
as far as your regalia. That's it. You know, like, don't let anybody tell you, oh, we didn't wear shawls or what have you. I mean, I mean, that's a little questionable. If you look at our, um, if you look at our Lakono uh, relatives and stuff, if you look at their regalia, their modern day, present day regalia, it has like these, these like kind of like, um, it's almost like these shawl like kind of garments and things of that nature. It's like, we look also to not just Puerto Rico or not just the Dominican Republic or not just Jamaica or whatever country um, or island of origin. Um, we also look at our relatives as well. We cross-reference our relatives throughout the Caribbean, you know, um, especially the ones that are closest to us as far as linguistically and genetically. So um, we'll make that determination as well. I mean, we were much bigger than what we think. We were not just to one island or two islands. Right, that's it. I need my friends by now. Hold on, there's a question for you. <laughs> oh, In Inaru disappeared, but there was a question for Come her. back, What's Inaru. Her? The question was, can you please define what you mean by a long time? Long time. Please define long time. In, in reference to, what, what, when did I say that? Yes, um, in long time true. for... You were saying that, and at some point, I guess you were saying that we've been doing something... I think it was like when we were doing something for a long time and guess it's, uh, instead of saying, I don't know, I'm waiting for shenanigans to say, people in the community a long time. Oh, I guess. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a long time? So, like, in comparison, like, so some folks have been in the community, like, I'm talking about, like, within the community involved, like, actually living, like, a lot of, like, walking that road. And when I say walking that road, does that mean? You know what I mean? It's like, you don't necessarily have to practice all the spiritualities or, but at least kind of like living, living in a way where um, your, your indigenous Caribbean ancestors are kind of like um, that model for you, you know? I mean, of course, you honor all of your ancestors, right? And everything, and you, you honor all, and there's going to be elements of your other ancestors from all over the world that's going to be there. Um, but for the, the <laughs> sorry, that was my part. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it's one of those things that um, you know, uh, I mean, a long time was it? That's relative, right? Long can mean five years for one person. It can mean twenty years to another. For if you were talking to um, Boyo um, Trading Post, who has been uh, in the movement since the 90s, you know, I mean, that's pretty long, you know? So it's like, I mean, I've, I've been in that's the movement. That's definitely since, a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been in the movement since 99. I mean, like, on my journey. Let me correct that. Not the movement, on my journey since 99. But I've been in the movement since 2006. Mm. Since like, since like the main days, you know. So like, like that kind of thing. So it's, I mean, it's, it's again, it's relative. It's how active somebody is. It's somebody you admire. Like, you know, it's like think about being in in school, right? And high school. There's gonna be some, or even like whatever trade school high school whatever analogy you want to think of and you know you look at some teachers and you need an advisor right for a topic or a subject or something like that and you are to seek out that advisor and what you do is you observe people within you know the teaching your your, your teachers and see which one that you vibe with the most and you feel that you can get um a lot of information from I mean, it's very, it's very similar to the Sanyo community. There's going to be people that you're going to vibe with that's been in this a little longer. It could be like four years, five years, you know, whatever. You know, even two years. Who knows? But if they, if they feel like, you know, they're on the right path and you, you want to um, kind of like learn from them a little bit more, like walk with them um, along the journey, I mean, just do it. I would say just reach out. If they, if they ha and ask. If they have capacity, that's another thing too. 
because you know, like I could, I, I know that um, you know, uh, Elba is uh, so Chinese library is so, is so knowledgeable and everything like that, but you know, there's so many people that might be asking like, like all these questions and things of that nature. So you have to kind of be very mindful of uh, you know, the capacity. So you always ask permission. And then you ask permission for everything. That's another thing. You ask permission of the ancestors, you ask permission of the land, the water, everything, everything around you when you go uh, on your journey, including the people that are you, you're working with. All right, that's it. I'm going to eat my French fries. That, I feel that, that leads us. She's like, like, please let me eat my French fries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, though. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I was just going to say, Elba, if you don't mind, I feel like that leads us into another thing that I think all of us up here um, really agree with and, and, and how it relates to trauma is, um, you know, I've seen some things in the comments about like decolonizing and it's something we talk about, but I think it's really, really important. And I, wait, sorry, the cat's moving. She's going to, there you go. Uh, <laughs> really, really important um, to talk about in relation to gener gener uh, generational trauma can't talk that decolonizing is only half the battle it's half the battle the other side of it is indigenizing oneself and indigenizing oneself is deeply related to healing the trauma that that's my opinion on it and i don't know if anyone else wants to add anything or speak on it and i think it's really important to um you know, and being around community, actual people who like embrace this idea, embrace that, and not just Tainos, other indigenous groups. Um, and I, I kind of feel like this will often be the hill I die on when, <laughs> when I say I feel like it's really, really critically important for reconnecting um, Taino, you know, no matter the age, to find and befriend indigenous elders in other communities. People who have been wholly raised with like indigenous lifestyles and mindsets or people who have grown up on a reservation and everything because it will give you a perspective on life that is unlike anything else. Because through your lens, you are still looking at everything through a colonized lens if you are not indigenizing yourself. And it's really, really important to heal the trauma because you can't heal what you don't understand is what it was supposed to be. And if I'm, I'm making sense, like if you, how can you return to something if you don't fully grasp the concept? Because we as a people have been so far removed from it. You know what I mean? And it's so critically, critically, critically important. And it's why, one of the reasons that, I know that Elba and I have talked about really this. I, I like love this um, bookshop owner. I have found uh, paperbacks and fry bread, indigenous woman owned uh, independent bookstore. And she pushes BIPOC literature that features BIPOC artists that's written by BIPOC, indigenous history, all of the things to really um, put it out there and promote it and make sure that we are telling our own stories. And that, and like, you know, reading those things and all of that, understanding the lens, you know, I think all of that is so incredibly critical to all of this conversation around generational trauma. So I'm done. I get you back and I'm going to shut up. I agree. <laughs> I agree. No, I definitely agree. And I, th I think there's a lot of people that have that same sentiment of needing to be in community, not just with ourselves, but with other indigenous peoples. And um, there, there's a saying that has more to do with like mental health than indigeneity, but I think it applies, which is you can't heal in the same environment that hurt you. Um, so if the environment that's hurting you is colonization and that's the environment you're kind of stuck in, it's very hard to kind of get out of that not not just you know in a physical sense but in a psychological mental sense as well so that that makes all the sense in the world and um i think that going back to something you guys were talking about with regard to like refusal to change and people being stuck 
1492, you know, we, we kind of not being stuck in 1492, 1492, 1492 shows that we are what we say we are, which is still here in the living people. <laughs> um, because if we are stagnant and there's no evolution, then you're not a living, you know, the same when it comes to language, like if it's stagnant and there's not, there's, you know, I think we talked about it the other day where there are constantly new words being added to a dictionary because of their colloquial use. And, you know, um, so they get, someone might say, oh, you can't write that in a paper. And then five, 10 years from now, you can put it in the paper because it is officially recognized by Merriam Webster or whatever as like a legitimate word to use as it's being 1492. I'm sorry, guys, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, another thing that, that um that i wanted to like bring up with regard to refusal to change that we talked about as well is the fact that people fought so hard to get to this point it's why they don't want to let go of certain things you know for example with regard to per puerto rico specifically there are a lot of people there was this conversation um and it keeps like resurfacing the whole thing you know didn't use flags whatever whatever and you'll see people whose you know families and stuff were really like because of the ley de mordanza mordaza or the gag law which made it to where it was illegal to even have a puerto rican flag after u.s imperialism like a lot of people take that that we well, don't have flags you know into insult because people died over that flag blood was shed for that flag. So that that's kind of an example of why certain things are hard to let go of because it was so hard to even obtain in the first place. Yep. My dad was People one of them. People expect us to live in Boyu and sleep in hammock. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And not use the internet and not. It can, it can get really hard because. Yeah, it's like, oh, you you guys talking about colonization, you get pro no problem using the white man's internet. And it's like, well, what do you want us to do? <laughs> like, I mean, shoot. I and mean, on top of that, like for indigenous peoples, there's also the fact that there was um, ceremony that wasn't allowed to be conducted until what, like the 70s? And there was, mm -hmm. people weren't allowed to have language. People weren't allowed to do a lot of things. So, you know, it, it gets, it's like all of these issues compacted against each other, plus throwing in modern day issues due to, you know, Fulana por aquí doesn't like Fulano por allá. And, you know, or the leader of this tribe got beef with this tribe. So everybody affiliated with these two tribes are like feeling the the effects of it and stuff like that. It just it it all gets it all gets crazy and complicated, but I think, I think I rambled enough and probably like got us all off track. So I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> no, this was all part of everything. We're good. We're good. We're good. With the, um, with regards <laughs> to, to living an indigenous life, I think that a lot of us that are, are from or have family from the islands. And I, I know we were talking about the other, just the other day. I think we do live indigenous lives is that, our mind is so colonized that we can't recognize mm -hmm. that indigenous life. But if you, you know, if you look at our foods, you know, because sometimes I feel like um, the people of the, uh, uh, the Taino people are one of the few communities as a whole. If you look at every single island, when they move around, you take your music, you take your food, you take your drink, you take your, the way you speak, and you don't lose that throughout the generations for the most part. And, but what you do lose is the ability to recognize that a lot of that food and that music and that drink is, mm -hmm. is part of our heritage. It's part of our indigenous DNA that we have stuck in, you know, you know, in our blood. And I think that a lot of people need to start seeing things in that light. And, you know, when I was in Puerto Rico, my grandmother would get, the, the gandules and we would sit there and, and pluck the gandules and do all sorts of things on the farm, which was a nightmare. <laughs> but, you know, that was living an indigenous life. It wasn't 
mm-hmm. living a colonized life. We, our families were trying to survive, mm-hmm. under our, especially back in the day. And they mm-hmm. still are, you know? And I think that people need to recognize that even though you may not see it, you are living an indigenous life to some extent. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think that's another reason why, you know, hanging out with other natives is important because sometimes you don't realize how indigenous something is until, you know, you're hanging out with other natives, they do a thing and you're like, wait a second, we do that too. You know, like we have the same exact thing or something similar, like the, the Taino version of it. And it's like, yo, this has been indigenous my whole, the whole time. Uh-huh. And here I am thinking it's 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 Spanish and it's and it's not. It's the same with the language, like Hamaca and stuff like that. That's not Spanish. That's Taino. But we were taught that it's Spanish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think even something as simple as um, roasting each other and like using humor and like really like. We, we've had these conversations that we'll be talking about some really traumatic stuff and then we're cracking jokes about the trauma that like, you know, John Glass flying at you and your mother like getting ready to murder you, like all of these kinds of things, you know, whatever. And we'll make jokes about it. But it was in, in a past relationship and, and, and being around a lot of other, you know, indigenous people that were like Lakota and other stuff like that. You know, the way that they roast each other and crack jokes and like, do all of this kind of stuff and like laugh at like really like trauma (laughs) you know (laughs) because it's it's you know laughter is medicine and it's kind of like are we gonna laugh about it we're gonna cry about it we can't change it so it's kind of like even something as you know something like that is really indigenous because you would always say that's how we roll we just like crack jokes on each other and we do it and that's like that's how we show love like if we're not picking on you we don't give a shit about you like that and that's kind of you know what it was and I don't think exactly yeah like I it was something I learned and it's it, it kind of like has stayed with me all these years because I think it's something that there there's a lot of truth in that if you look across um you know our community and other indigenous communities I can read your mouth. You agree? Absolutely. <laughs> joning is definitely a thing. <laughs> but yeah, no. joning is definitely a thing. Um, and like you said, throughout different indigenous communities, not just not just in the Americas, you know, because I know a lot of Black folks do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, whether they're indigenous to Africa or the Americas, and or, or both. You know what I mean? They do the same thing. You know, talking about your five head, like all that kind of. Stuff. <laughs> But, but um, what were you wanting to say, Inadu? I'm sorry. I think I have a little bit of a lag. So if I'm cutting y'all off, I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, yeah, definitely. It's like uh, in in uh, where where I live in this part of Lenapahokan, we call it the dozens. So, like, you know, you kind of like, you know, go back mm-hmm. and forth and assault somebody. But um, I just wanted to say that if... If uh, reconnecting folks here on this live are looking for, like, uh, something intertribal or whatever, I mean, you do have powwows, but, like, you can also, like, see if there's a local Indian center nearby mm-hmm. or something. Uh, unfortunately, in my area, there really isn't. Um, I think the closest one is Baltimore. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I mean, you can look for, like, some sort of festival or function or or anything like that, any groups, intertribal groups uh, that might just be meeting once a month and just having potluck. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's just like just hanging out and just just being, being a person. Yeah. That's great. You know, I'm- it does you don't have to do anything. You don't have to dress in regalia. You don't have to be all mm-hmm. like whatever, you know, it's just like just be you being you. I, to, to add to that, I was going to say, you know, I don't know if anyone on here is a gamer, really unconventionally, um, I promise you, if you play an FPS, you will find indigenous people on those games. They will have, like, things native, indigenous, all kind of whatever in there. They'll have their crews together. I promise you, if you play online gaming, you, especially FPS, you will find indigenous people. <laughs> So it's unconventional. What's that, P.S.? What's that? Shooter. 
first person shooter games like Call of Duty. Gotcha. Days. Okay, I'm up in there, huh? Yeah. Seeing Naru's face, like, like I mean, like there, and it doesn't even have to be a first person shooter. Yeah, like I know Animal Crossing. Animal there's Crossing. a bunch of people like yeah. turning their. But with first person <laughs> shooter, because it's community. You got me into that. <laughs> yes. But with first person shooter and games like that, anything that's community co op play, it'll be easier to find them because you all have to go into a lobby and generally you have to like squat up in order to play certain games. See, I know you not everyone knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And so and so sometimes then that's how that's how you, you meet people, you know? Like it is that I can't tell you the amount of you know, indigenous people I met when I used to play co constantly either because of like my tag or anything else like that, or we would like get a group of us together and then start going after everyone else because in those games, unfortunately, you will get a lot of um, racism in there where if they see it says native or something like that, or even if you're just a female player and they come after you, so everyone squads up and then they start going after, you know, those people who were targeting you, so... It's unconventional, but it can be really fun. <laughs> you gotta have backup. <laughs> I think isn't isn't there a Facebook group that has like Taino gamers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elba, plug, plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all still have Facebook, yeah, we're you know trying I mean? to get it's worth get it more active. I see. They probably are are on Call of Duty. I know someone. And our Yukayeke who plays Call of Duty, that's a, a female. I used to play Call of Duty. I don't play anything anymore, really. But, it, yeah, they, they are there. I promise you. <laughs> you you can find them. They're there. Sorry. Sorry, Bohia. We like, we, we, we so. Wow. That's right. I can barely figure out TikTok. So, I do play <laughs> Animal Crossing, though. I do figure that one out. <laughs> do you play Animal Crossing? We need to be Animal Crossing friends. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but my daughter got me, you know, she said... I've I'm seen some of your pictures. Elba and I were, were talking about this. My daughter set me up with the with this TikTok thing and then walked away. So she's to blame that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone in the chat, if you're... Sorry, because I see a lot of people talking about games right now. <laughs> If you go on Facebook, there is a group that we also mod called Taino Gamers. Is it part, is it a page on the Taino Library now, Elba, or is it still separate? Taino Gamers. No, it's like a it's a subgroup. It's a subgroup of Taino Library. So you have to join Taino Library, and then you can join, mm -hmm. jump into that uh, subgroup, which is uh, Taino Gamers. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, shenanigans. So we're just saying, like, if you're interested, I mean, go there and start posting because we were trying to get it started for a while, but then it fell flat. You know, like the game fell flat. But <laughs> I'm looking through my notes. I mean, speaking, I think the um, I was gonna say that with regard to like um the toxic masculinity that we can kind of face as women at, in the gaming area, I think that would be a good segue into like machismo and internalized misogyny and stuff like that, which is definitely an aspect of the generational trauma that we experience as indigenous people and like the need to return to matriarchy. <laughs> so I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Boyo wants to I think there's a big need to return. To Sorry, I definitely have a lag. To matriarchy because we have, um, <laughs> uh, how do I say this and be politically correct? I don't um, think you have to be, it's okay. Okay, so <laughs> I noticed because I'm not a member of any Yuka Yeke at this point in time in my life that there's groups that have the women go out and do all the footwork and they do all of this work and they jump through hoops and they, you know, make things appear. They're the ones that go out and fight every time something goes down. They're the ones that are, you know, like we're the ones that are like holding the pitchforks and, <laughs> and get ready to like battle. Yeah. And the men, 
take the credit. We're cleaning up other people's messes. And then the men take mm-hmm. the credit. And I I notice that a lot and it just it it like boils my blood sometimes to watch it because why is it that we're the ones that are doing the bulk of the footwork? You guys are the ones. You guys are the ones that are doing the bulk of the foot footwork because I'm not doing any foot, footwork at this point in time in my life, but you guys are. And you guys should be getting that credit, not the men of the community. And I just feel like, you know, well, why aren't we, why aren't you guys, you know, we're like we were talking the other day about the not being a well-known female behike, you know? Why not? You know, or you get the really stupid stories about, you know, the the women caciques in the past that are being told and and it just it, it just really irritates me. <laughs> I mean it yeah, it, it's one of the, even something as like I know I know I don't think any men in this room will understand this, but all of us having had children, knowing the how skilled our ancestors had to be to help people through birth without all of this stuff that we have and I mean like what if there was a breech baby or some other complication or something else you know it was women helping other women it's been generations of women helping other women give birth like even something as like I don't want to say simple but you know natural uh, as that it was it was women and Who raises you? Who teaches you things? Most of the time, it is your mother. Even growing up in our household, was there anything that we went to our fathers for? Did we know that anytime we went to them, go ask your mother? What does that say to you? Or they'll walk right by their father. This. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Walk right by him to ask you for something. It's like, he's right there. You literally had to pass him to get to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they shouldn't and I, be like anymore. Yeah. And, and I just feel like even something as simple as that, like exactly what, what Elba was talking about, is the fact that in, in shenanigans is like, you know, the titis and the huelas were, were right behind, you know, where if mommy wasn't there. And it's like, it, that's exactly it. Like, if it's built into our culture to consistently de- like defer to women or we're just bypassing them because like mom's going to have the answer anyway, where do we think that came from? Because we know that didn't come from the colonizers. Mm-hmm. So like, where did that come from? That's so deeply, deeply ingrained in us. And I, I think I know something that we all agree about, like the need to return to the matriarchy and allowing women to, you know, not using us as the posters of movements or ideas or things we want to accomplish, but listening to us and putting us in places of not uh, ornamental leadership, but actual leadership. And, and, you know, having that support from the community behind us, from our male counterparts. And I think that's so critically important because if we want to see change and we want to keep moving forward, it, it, it's coming. And you see that across the world in indigenous communities. That is the women who are getting up and who are fighting and are pushing and doing all of this stuff for change and, and leading the way. And I just feel, I know we all feel really strongly about that, that in order to get us into the next phase, like, part of healing that trauma the biggest thing the bit the biggest like element we're combating is this returning to the matriarchy mm-hmm. yes Elba. sorry i was done i'm sorry i'm talking a lot. no 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 you're good i just know i know i have a lag and it probably just comes off like i'm interrupting and i like on my end it sounds it, like y'all are done talking but you're but you're not so that's why i was like i'm gonna raise my hand so when you're actually done I'm not, I don't interrupt you, but, um, to your point about like women, you know, showing up and ending up doing all of the work, um, that Marisol also, um, brought up, 
when the when when the Womland situation happened, did y'all not notice a in a severe lack of indigenous men speaking out yep. when there were issues among in like there's indigenous women being abused, being treated like crap, getting yelled at, and where were the men at? You know, and that's not to say that there were no men at all, but there were too few and, and far in between. And mm. that is a huge problem because men like to front, oh, our women are sacred, our women are sacred. And then when it comes time to protect us, we're left to look out for ourselves. You mm. know, I can, I can count, I can't even count how many times I was in a situation and it was a fellow indigenous woman that came to my rescue, mm -hmm. you know, or that came there to support me or what, or lend an ear or be like, if you just want to vent and cry, I, I will, I will hear you out, you know, cause you know, the men are, are not doing that. Mm -hmm. And they're and there for, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I thought you were done. That was my fault. Go ahead. Oh no, yeah. you're, you're you're good. I was basically gonna say like they're there, they're there for you know all of the photo ops and look at me, stroke my ego, whatever, whatever. But then when it comes time to do all the things that men are traditionally, even per the colonizer, supposed to be doing, like protecting and stuff like that, crickets. They don't. They're they're nowhere. I, I was exactly. Just gonna, yeah, the only thing I was gonna say is as like I just want to make sure that everyone understands that we're not saying like protect us like we need to be rescued like damsels in distress more more really to the point of like having our back i like, am six like be well both but i mean like one not exclusively over the other because it's not just about picking up arms and standing right up, yeah but but it's it's also like when if there's no active like you know physical threat where are you still supporting us still like you know cheering us on and being there and championing for us and when we are faced with the misogyny when we are faced with certain things and we're spoken down to or we're trying to advocate for ourselves and we find it really difficult sometimes in certain situations or even when there's you know back and forth in the social media posts you know where where are they They're, they're very, it's very few men that will come out and, and say something, you know what I mean? Cause they don't, they don't want to make their bros mad. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't want to break the bro code. And it's like, well, and I've seen men do this, like picking some fulano por ahí over their own partner. It's like, dude, then you go home with him. You know what I mean? Let him tend to your needs then, because I'm, I'm the one you're supposed to be standing by. And what I meant as far as like I am saying with regard to damsels in distress is, you know, black and indigenous women don't get to be damsels in distress. We are constantly, oh, you're so strong and you're so resilient. I'm tired. I want to feel safe. I want to be able to be you know, you know, uh, a gentle, sensitive, nurturing woman more often than I have than I am, because there is not a safe space for me to be that, you know, and it's, it's like, okay, well, these men out here talking about women don't cook and whatever anymore. Well, y'all don't build houses no more. So shut up. Yeah, I think also I'm just saying for, for some reason, um, and I don't know about you guys, but my parents were born in the thirties and I was born in nineteen seventy. And in my family it was always the girls do everything. And I noticed that in a lot of Latino or Taino families, not Latino, Taino families and, and others that um, they pick one of the children, one of the daughters becomes the one who does everything. She cooks, she cleans, she takes care of, she takes care of this one, she takes care of that one, she does this, she does that, and she's expected to do it 
regardless of how she's feeling. And this is projected on us by our own mothers. And I've spent a lot of my life trying to figure out what, where that, what part of the trauma is that coming from? Where they, the, the, some of the mothers feel the need to grasp onto that one child and not allow that one child to move forward or to do anything at all. And it's usually one of the daughters that gets shafted with the, you know, when you cook, everybody gets fed first and you're last. When you, you know, they make a mess, you got to clean it up. It doesn't matter who it is. They're, the men do nothing. And I see that a lot. I don't know if, if, I'm pretty sure it's changing now because, you know, we've all grown up. A lot of us have grown up with that. You know, but I see it, uh, I've seen that a lot in the older generation that just gets like, they almost become, the mothers almost become obsessively focused on, you're going to take care of me. You're going to take care of me and your father. You're going to do this and you're going to take care of your brother. And you're, I would, growing up, and I'm speaking from a personal place, I would have my mother tell me that when she died, I was going to be the one to call everybody in the family and call them to Puerto Rico and call them to Florida and call them over here in Boston and tell them, how are you doing? Regardless of whether they made con contact with me or not, I was expected to take on her role. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious to this day, I can't figure out where that, where that comes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just nodding my head because, as I said at the beginning of the live, I lost my mother about five months ago. And everything that you're saying, like, that is a lot of how I grew up. Like, there was two two daughters, but out of the two of us, I'm the one who always was put, and I'm the younger one, was put in that place. That, well, like, in my early 20s, I'm about to, like, I'm not trying to give away how old I am, but uh, <laughs> in my, <laughs> I, uh you know remember my mother having a surgery and her like if anything happens I want this and I feel this way about this not my older sister everything was on me and it's something you know if we're going to talk about generational trauma and healing everything it's something that honestly has come up in therapy about the about the fact that um my family is kind of trying to replace my mother with me because I was like trained yep. to do all of these things and through all her illnesses and everything and, and taking care of everyone that I just became like the default, like, uh, like, you know, my dad's at appointments, what's my medication? Didn't I give you a piece of paper with everything on it? But like, you know, like all, all of these kinds of things and they seem normal, but in the way, like exactly the way that you're speaking about a it, bohio, it, it's not, it's because you're, con you're literally put upon and expected to like replace like, like literally like they're raising the next matriarch without realizing like like preparing you for like all of the bad things to happen so you can just step right in without like trauma and then everything else surrounding like how that feels is mitigated and minimized because it doesn't matter you're just expected to do the sorry logan's like real hype <laughs> so no and i think that that's that, I think that, you know, you make a very, very excellent point in, in how, like, you know, that trauma is there and how it may relate, like, how I think shenanigans in the, in the chat was saying that maybe it's trauma to having lost all our men at one point and, and you know, just making sure that there was a, a leader within the family strong enough to, like, keep everybody going. But, man, we are tired. We are yep. tired. Definitely, because I've gotten a lot of um, family members have cut me off because I was like, I'm not doing this. This is not, <laughs> this is not happening, you know. So where, where is that disconnect and how do we ensure that our future daughters, you know, our girls don't end up... <laughs> You know, and then it goes again back to one of the reasons why the men don't stand up for us. You know, it's like a vicious cycle. It just mm -hmm. goes around in the circle. 
you know, the mother, the mother teaches the men to rely and depend on the women and them not have any rep repercussions for what they do. And, and I'm not saying this is in all the families, but in the big bulk of families in our communities have been raised like this, especially with older parents, you know. I've noticed there's a tendency to, at least, at least in my family, there seems to be a tendency of, well, I suffered through this, so you have to too, rather than I suffered through this, so I'm going to create, I'm going to create an environment where you don't have to, like, that's how you break generational these generational cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to shenanigans and coffee's point, there was a point in time where like our men were taken from us, you know, so we did end up doing a lot. But like you said, it got it was consistently enforced. Even when we did have our, we did have men around to to do all the things but then nobody listened to us at the same time. Like that doesn't even make any sense. You know, um, and I actually there was a post that was made like last year that um, um, someone on one of my friends on Facebook recently shared. And it had to do with a woman who was at her funeral, like people were she was at someone else's funeral and the husband got up there and started talking about his whole life or whatever. And then all the other people that got on to talk about this woman spoke about like all the things they did she did for them and everything and the woman listening to this is like i know nothing about this woman except for what she did for all of these other people like she literally made herself so small it was like she didn't even exist like she didn't even get to have a life because it was her responsibility was placed on her shoulders to be everything for everyone and she had nothing left for herself even at her funeral the focus wasn't on her. Like, mm -hmm. how fucked up is that? Yeah. And um, like, I understand what you what you're talking about and what what um Kay was talking about as well because I'm literally watching my mom go through that same thing right now. She is the oldest uh daughter, the only daughter. Um, she has four brothers, and all of these responsibilities are being placed on her and expectations placed on her. And even when her brothers are like, oh, hey, I'll handle this thing so that you don't have to, who is the family calling anyway? Her. Mm -hmm. Even though one of my uncles is supposed to be the one delegating things and calling folks or whatever, everyone is still bothering her. And she's just like, Coño, I can't get a break. Yep. It wears on you. So, like not just not just you know uh mentally or psychologically it starts to affect your body like you start having you know all of this stress like one of what did they say one of the number one killers of people is stress you yeah. know you start having like anxiety attacks or panic attacks and stuff from all of this stuff that you're like pushing through because everyone's depending on you you can't let anybody down and before you know it it all catches up on you and you're just like boom Mm -hmm. I'm having a panic attack. I can't breathe, you mm -hmm. know, and nothing is even actively going on for you to be responding that way. But um, there's there's a book titled this and it's, oh. it's because it's true. The body keeps the score. Oh, because <laughs> Kay's coming through with the book. It, exactly. He keeps the score. I'm going to have to pick The body up. keeps the score. It is. It is. I haven't started. Yeah. Reading. And it goes. Like, oh, go ahead. I was just saying, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that it goes into like stress and, you know, how like certain things can can lead to like anxiety issues, PTSD and stuff like that. There's complex PTSD now because, you know, psychologists are starting to recognize like it's not just something that soldiers who go to war experience. You know what I mean? This happens in this presents itself in other ways. Mm -hmm. But what were you going to say, Kay? I'm sorry. Oh, no, that I was just going to say, I haven't started reading it yet, but yeah, like it talks a lot about, I mean, and depending on um, where you are in your spiritual journey, not just your reconnecting journey, because your spiritual journey and part and in the reconnection is two different things, but that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, 
um no because spiritual trauma religious trauma is a thing right. too i know but i just like but, but i mean for where i'm gonna go with this that that's gonna that could open a whole other can of oh <laughs> so I was like, gotcha gotcha like okay. you know like trauma that's held in the spirit in the spirit in the body right and it's, it's two different two different things and that as i said that one of those is a conversation for for another day because that's a whole a whole thing but um this book talks a lot about um and i have other books on like vibrational energy and and energy centers within the body and um, trauma and pain and illness and how they're all related but that is actually written by a medical doctor so you know that's the other thing I want to point out that a lot of these books are written by like new agey they do reiki or or whatever but it's a medical doctor who t- talks about basically also through all the years of practice and everything how he has learned that your body like stress trauma like not just stress but trauma actual trauma either emotional trauma, physical trauma, years, you know, talking years of abuse, um, if you were essayed, uh, you know, all of those things that even if you're in therapy and you're doing the work to, to heal, your body is storing that trauma. And that the correlation between the trauma that so many of us experience in our lives and how it manifests in the body and actually is the cause for many of our illnesses or many of the physical things or like I, I, you know, people who are close to me know that in the passing of my mother, I developed a, a health issue um, that is deeply related to the stress and all the change and everything that, that occurred through, through all of those months and that transition. And uh, that's how this, this thing with the book ended up coming up because it was a direct, the the illness is a direct correlation to you know whatever but just you know if you guys are interested you can look for it and and read it and uh but that that you know that's what it talks about how our body is manifesting the trauma and how we keep carrying that with us in 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 us sorry i got like he's trying to like get into candy and do he's doing all he's doing the most right now <laughs> I mean, my, my, my kid was doing the same thing earlier. Like, I was like, I'm going to be on a live if y'all got to, because we have one bathroom right now the, the in the master bedroom, because the guest bathroom is like out of commission. So I was like, I'm going to be live, guys. So unless you have to go to the bathroom, don't come in here. And if you do come in here, let me know so I can cover you, because I'm not trying to show, you know, my, my kids to the whole internet world or whatever. And, you know, Kevin didn't care. He was just like, whatever, mom, like, I, you know, they don't listen. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you say unclench your jaw when you when you typed in unclench your jaw. Mm-hmm. I was actually clenching my jaw throughout this entire conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I have a bad habit of doing that. Like, I, I will sometimes like my jaw will start to hurt, and I'm and that's when I realize like I've been clenching it this whole time. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. I think we also have to watch, um, especially when you have daughters, how other family members approach them in terms of um, them becoming the one caretaker. Because I remember I tanked once at a Renaissance fair because it was like 100 degrees and my doctor had given me new medication. Fast forward, I had a, a heat stroke type of episode. And I could hear someone in my family saying to my daughter, oh, you got to take care of mommy now. You got to take care of mommy now. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't have to take care of mommy. You have to be a little girl. You don't take care of mommy. You know, and, and sometimes we don't pick up on that unless we're actively in that position of being the caregiver to everything. And I think that we have to, especially if we have daughters, we have to be very mindful about how other relatives are speaking to them because they soak that in and they think, well, I got to take care of my mom, Mm -hmm. you know, and they don't, they have to be kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, and to, and to that point, I was at another funeral this weekend and, 
um, I saw the person who lost their husband with their youngest child next to them because the two other ones had their partners there. The oldest one is like 28 and her boyfriend was there. And then the other one who's like 22 had her boyfriend there. And the youngest one was sitting next to the mother. And it seemed like she didn't cry or anything. And every time the mother would fall apart, the girl is like rubbing her back and holding her and not like, you know, tending to her. And I'm looking at it because I've been in this position my whole entire life. I'm looking at it and I want to cry for the girl because I'm like, your pain matters too. You're in pain. You lost your, your parent. You know, it's not your job to like, whether or not your mother's in pain, it's not your job to console her in her grief of her husband. You are still a child, you mm-hmm. know, at, at, at even though she's 17. And just looking at that, you know, that it brings that image back to me because when I watch them, that's all I could think about, like a reflection on my life and, you know, how I've had to be that for so many, all of these situations. I'm like, like, who decided that? Who decided that it was our job? Mm-hmm. And I think I that's feel like that has to think. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you're fine. You're fine. You're not. You're good. I love you. <laughs> you're fine. That is, <laughs> that, that is, that is, I think it's all wrapped up in everything with generational trauma and, 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 and all of that in the sense of also in, in the sense of, I'm trying to, I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to like put it back together now. Go ahead, Ella. I threw you I, off I your groove. My... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Okay. <laughs> No, I think uh, what I was going to say was like, while you guys were talking, it kind of like clicked into my head because one of the reasons that I moved down to Florida, you know, there's better schools and stuff down here or whatever, is that my mom is getting up in age and she has fallen a couple of times and like really, you know, like broke a bone or whatever. And, you know, um, I love my dad, but he's not the most nurturing person. Um so even when my mom is like got a busted ass leg or whatever, she's she's having to go do all this stuff and not having as much help. So I'm like, oh, you know, here, here, like Marisol just got done saying about her. I mean, Boyo got done saying about her own daughter. You know, it was ingrained in me. Like now it's time to take care of mommy to look out for your mom the way she looked out for you. And that's really something that like, it just clicked in my head, like, holy crap, I was conditioned that way as well. Like, you know, like, I, it, and it's not, and my mom didn't, you know, my mom didn't say, oh, you need to come down and take care of me or anything like that. She never, like, you know, guilt tripped me or anything, but I was, that was still where my brain went. Like, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm the oldest daughter or whatever. And I really, really believe that a lot of that has to do ties into, you know, the whole, like, patriarchal, Catholic kind of um, perspective of things, you know, of, like, women are supposed to do this and be this or whatever, and the man is supposed to do this and be this or whatever. Um, Very strict, staunch gender roles. And, um, you know, I because I feel like the generational trauma and the need to return and the machismo and issues like that and the need to return to matriarchy. A lot of that is kind of like wrapped into religious trauma as well, you know, because we've all experienced, I mean, not maybe, maybe not everybody, but I feel like a lot of us have experienced, you know, what would now qualify as child abuse. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Because there was a heavy emphasis on punishment you know like a negative reinforcement rather than positive reinforcement which is encouraging the behaviors that you want to see happen rather than punishing what you don't want to see happen um so i didn't know if maybe you guys had any anything that you wanted to um to speak to with regard to that or if that's like a you know I'd rather not I'd rather not talk about that because maybe it hits a little too close to home but yeah sorry the cat's like knocking into this thing and I'm sorry you're good Storm be doing her own thing she, she showed everybody who Kulo like three times she just like <laughs> Um, 
to mute you guys for a second. So you were asking about like religious trauma? Yeah, like um in what ways would you say that that kind of that religious the blah, 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 religious trauma and generational trauma kind of like intertwine in our communities and present themselves, you know, um, maybe in to elaborate on something I said, or if there's something that you guys were like, oh, well, there's also this too that I, you know. Well, I will talk about something, but it, it's, it could be trigger, like trigger warning topic stuff. So I'm just going to preface that out there so everybody knows, like, I, when my dad was a child, this is my father's story. It's it's not it doesn't directly involve SA, but it's like oh in in their roundabout um related you know insinuated in in the topic. So my dad uh grew up you know a lot of us raised very Catholic, very uh you know with that in that I know my mother was and so was my dad. My dad was an altar boy, and he always tells the story of. You know, a lot of us, when we grew up really Catholic, it was seen as, you know, especially back, you're talking like in the 40s and 50s and stuff, that if you went to seminary, if someone in the, or if you had a priest in the family, it was a really big deal to have someone who was, um, you know, um, and someone who was a nun or a priest or whatever was a really, really big deal. And so my dad always has stories about how when, you know, he was an altar boy because it was such a big thing, like, you know, put your kids there and, you know, they're doing Sunday school, they're doing activities, or especially if they're like here in the city or whatever, you know, keeping them out of trouble and they can go on like trips that the church does for like the youth or whatever. And the priest trying to lure him away to go do something in the basement. And my father always tells the story in jokes. He's like, well, you know, I was no pendejo, so I wasn't going downstairs. Like, you know, I'm I'm from the, I'm, you know, he said I may have been like, he was, I think he was like 11 or 12. I don't think he was older than that. And he always says, you know, I'm not, I'm not a pendejo. So I was, I knew what the hell happened down there. I wasn't going, but I knew other kids that it happened to. And, you know, Indeed. like talking about that and like, you know, like I said, it didn't happen to him, but the trauma that sometimes being in those things, because they're protected people, they're people that, you know, our, our mothers and fathers were like, you know, go hang out in the church, go be an altar boy, go be with the priest, go, you know, stay out of trouble. It looks good for you. You, you know, you know, whatever. I raised a good, a good kid. And meanwhile, they're over there, you know, molesting them. And that's also like residential school um, trauma to, you know, residential school survivors, those stories are really heartbreaking um, about about all of that. But just the fact that, you know, those people who maybe not anyone in this room, but we know that it, when, when, when Catholicism, Catholic schools, all of that stuff being so present in our homelands or that connection and then people coming to the mainland and still seeking that out, we know that there are people who have been traumatized by that, either by, you know, some form of sexual assault or... Um, even, uh, you know, the way that they would beat kids for with punishment with paddles and things like that. You know, my mother grew up with that in Catholic school and uh, her mother did too, being mostly raised by nuns and, you know, corporal punishment and things like that. Why do you think that's how we get punished? Because that was taught to us. And, you know, that, and, and that's also part of breaking the cycle because they have suffered our parents going all the way back, but even just looking at your parents and grandparents, the way that they were treated and viewed, and I know some people in here know personal stories about things with my mother and how, you know, that I've shared about my mother's experience growing up a brown woman in upstate New York in the 1950s, you know? Um, and so all of those things, you know, they manifest and that comes out when we're, when we're raised. And that's why I said, you know, the thing about joking earlier that we'll be joking about like some really like traumatic things or things that you know happen to us as kids that as a mom I look at it and I'm like I can't believe they asked me to do those things or that I was doing that or that I you know I have a memory of that like that like oh my god like what <laughs> what was happening you know what I mean and 
Yeah. Them priests, them, them priests and nuns, they're not as innocent as people think. Not at all. Like, I know that's one thing that my that I can say as far as generational cycles that my parents cut off was that, you know, religious fanaticism almost. You know, my parents both um, were raised very strict Catholic and my mom was, you know, your typical Catholic schoolgirl and not the one that was wiling out either. Like my mom is a goody, goody two shoes. Okay. Like she just, and they both refused to do that to my sister and I, they refused to indoctrinate us. It was always, you know, he, like when I was starting to ask questions about like religion and stuff like that, they got me a world religions book and were like, look at all of it whatever calls to you, you know what I mean? Like everybody's path is different. So you, you do, you do what you, what you want to do. It's your spirituality. It's your path. If, and if you even believe in, you know, cause there's people who are atheists. Like my child is atheist. They don't, they don't necessarily believe in, in like, um, this like Christian, at least concept of a God or whatever, um, you know, gifts, aside they're just like I don't know about all that like whatever and I don't I don't force that on them just like my parents didn't force it on me so at least there's there's that but with regard to some of the other stuff you know it's been on me to to break certain things and I have to catch myself falling into certain cycles and remember like you know when your parents did this to you how did that make you feel do you want your kids to feel that way do you want them to look at you the way that you looked at them when they did or said a certain thing. No. So then you got to do something different, you know? And I tell my kids all the time, you know, I'm probably still going to do it wrong, but I know this way is wrong. So I'm going to try it a different way and I may still fuck up, but at least I'm not doing, you know, repeating a pattern that I already know is not going to work. Is not, it just, is not it. I think it's also important to remember that it's just not Catholicism. It's Christianity as a whole. As a whole. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Because or Abrahamic I, religions. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, growing up, we grew up with uh, Nazarene faith. And it was like you were at church Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You couldn't wear pants. You couldn't wear makeup. I mean, there was all these rules that you had to be following. And then later on, my mom became a very fanatical Catholic, for lack of better words. Um, and I made, I, like you, Elba, I didn't raise, you know, like your mom did with you guys. I didn't raise my daughter with any religion because of that. Because I wanted her to be able to make her own choice as to what to do. Because, let me tell you, being raised in a home where Christianity was the center was not necessarily untraumatic. I think it was more traumatic <laughs> than being raised in a I, home where where there isn't any kind of religion, you know? I I believe I believe that as well. There's there's a lot of just really just really weird things, you know, and people tend to cherry pick as well depending on the sect of um Abrahamic religion that they follow, like some of them get a little, not a little, some of them get real crazy with the things that they expect from their, you know, um, from their people. And there's financial abuse happening and all kinds of, all kinds of crazy stuff. Like you're going to go to hell if you don't donate them 10% of time or whatever, you know, it's just, it's, it's really ridiculous. And my parents, both were like, I'm not, I'm not putting y'all through that. I'm not, I'm not doing that to you guys. No, and that's, that's great because it gave you an opportunity to make your own choices in the future. You know, something that a lot of us didn't get. You, that choice was made for you <laughs> until you became an adult. And then you were like, mm, I don't think this works for me. And then you walk away and that becomes another drama within you know drama trauma within your family that you've 
turned your back on what they think is tradition and what they think is what you should be following and doing, you know? Or save your soul because whatever. Are you, are you still alive, Inaro? I mean, I know she's, you're probably like in the flow. Yeah, I think that she's busy. She's in her artistic flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Or even. laughs> Sorry. Oh, there she goes. You no, you're good. You're good. I just didn't know if there was at any point you wanted to jump in, but you're like, nah, they 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 got it. <laughs> no, you guys. I'm just. I'm really listening. You know, it's like a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be next. That's that's gonna be next. I'm, I'm wishing it into the universe. I'm working on my podcast. Put it out there. Don't put it out there too much because we already know the battles that we've been fighting. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. All right, so I'll I'll go now. <laughs> She's like slowly backing away. <laughs> <laughs> it is an inside joke. Everyone's probably like, what are these people even talking about? <laughs> One day. One day we, we won't be too powerful. Uh, no, we're going to be too powerful all the time. But one day the universe will quit putting obstacles in our path so we can, Let's you know. It's only Elba who needs all the technology upgrades. I really do. I mean, I like, like I said, my internet, it got messed up. I'm on my cell phone. My cell phone is an iPhone 6, okay? So we are real, real, you know, we're real broke bitch over here. Like, I'm, I'm wearing Harry Potter glasses. Look. <laughs> Oh, you know no. what I mean? Like, it's taped up and shit. <sighs> this frame came from the dollar store because I'm too cheap to go to an actual lens place. To So I just took the lens, like, my glass out and went to the dollar store and just, like, matched it up to all the different reading glasses. And I was like, I'm going to buy these $2 glasses, pop them lenses out, and put my lenses in there. You know what that's called? Body quite ingenuity <laughs> added back. Yep. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. That's because a, a bitch is broke. You know, you gotta do it. You gotta figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Well, Work with what you got. Thank you for being with us, hostile busybody. I appreciate it. Um, oh, I was looking at the notes. Tuck them babies in. I know mine is. He's quiet for now, temporarily. I just, I dipped. I was like, husband, you got these kids. I'm going to my parents' house for good internet. <laughs> and my mom's like, hi, you know, wanted to give me a hug and stuff. And I'm like, I'm alive. Bye. I'm going to go hide in this guest room now. <laughs> Elba, someone's coming for you in the comments. You're getting picked on. I'm getting picked on. What day are we going to say? See you with one eyeglass. It's a Monopoly man. <laughs> Yo, my kids, my kids call me, they'll be like, R, because sometimes, you know, because my lenses don't fit perfectly on this frame. So sometimes the shit just like pops right out. So then I'm like, I'm walking around like, like this. And my parents are like, mommy, or my kids are like, mommy's the pirate. R, And I'm like, man, y'all shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. See, it's not my I fault. I'm blind. Then when I tell you, you got to pick on people when you love them. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that that yeah if we're too nice to you it's because we don't like you it's a love hate relationship <laughs> it, it, it's no hate it's no hate <laughs> I was looking at the the where we are in the notes I want to say I think we covered pretty much Pretty much everything. Um, and you guys know I could talk to y'all all night. I don't, you know, want to make anybody feel like they have to stay any later than they than they really want to. But, um, oh, yeah, we were going to, I didn't know if you guys wanted to talk about it with regard to, you know, religious trauma and spirituality and stuff like that. Um, you know, as far as, like, the need to recreate ceremony because so many of them, like, we weren't allowed to 
to practice our, our own practices. So a lot was lost to us, just like with language, the same goes with spirituality and um, being careful what spirits you think you're calling and that red flags because there's cult leaders was. out here. Mm -hmm. Go, okay, go, okay, go. <laughs> Wait, what am I? First of all, I got to agree with Jasmine because since Alba cut her hair, all I've done is say how cute she is. Like, your haircut is getting love in the comments. Oh, thank you, guys. So, I just want to... So, we're talking about recreating ceremony. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Recreating ceremony. <laughs> I have a few, the semi, I have a few books. I want to learn from Elder. So here's the thing about ceremony. And Elba and Bohio, please feel free to jump in at any point in time. There will be people in this movement who will swear hand to creator that this is, you know, verbatim the way that this thing was done. And I will tell you, and Elba has read more books than I have, and Bohio has been around longer than I have, <laughs> that in the Chronicles, there is no A to Z way to ceremony. <laughs> it's not written anywhere. It's not um, any of that stuff, you know, so... That's something that when we talk about red flags and we talk about, you know, like, don't get involved in other people's drama and how that perpetuates forward and everything, because when that toxicity, toxicity starts to enter in now, it's not just like the social interactions, right, or how you're learning things, but now it is entering the space of spirituality, that's very dangerous, because... And I will tell you, because I know, I, know, I know that there are people in here from some of them that I've seen, like, um, around on TikTok and stuff that are newer newer to reconnecting and newer to the movement. I forget the way that Inaru separated it earlier, but very beautifully when she said, like, the difference between, like, reconnecting and, and, and you know, being, being involved in the movement, that um, you can be blinded by people selling you ceremony. And unfortunately in our spaces you will find people who sell you ceremony the same way that like you hear and as a, a christian uh, analogy being sold snake oil and um it's it's really important that um you be careful who gives you ceremony because there are people who do ceremony and they are not at all doing what they are telling people they are doing. And it's something that, you know, I'm very big on everybody, you know, you should always protect your energy. If you're going into ceremony with someone you've never been in ceremony with before, people you don't really know, you should have foliatis or other things on you that are a form of um, spiritual protection and just be really mindful and leery because sometimes Right, not everyone is safe to go into ceremony with. And, you know, and all of that. It is a trust. I know I sound I'm being like a real negative Nancy right now, but all of that is deeply related to like generational trauma and reconnecting and creating ceremony. And I say that because as part of that, and I think everyone here, yes, discern the difference between pray and pray. That mm -hmm. we um, will tell you that I lost my chain of thought. I think you were going in the direction of like, you know, being careful because just because uh, you think a certain spirit or entity is being called in doesn't yes. necessarily mean that right. that is who you're working with. Yes. And it is, that's something to, that you need to be really careful of because there are people who will practice and uh, they will use your energy to basically feed something to get something that they want and it's not ceremony it's not real ceremony because real ceremony requires everyone in that space to give and receive that is real ceremony and as i said there is no like 
full ceremony written out anywhere. Part of that's where I was going. Part of healing the generational trauma and all of that. And part of the stuff with change is, is, is also knowing that we have to modernize ceremony. I'm not saying reinvent the wheel of our spirituality. I'm talking about we don't have documented like coming of age ceremony for women. So that means whatever from bits and pieces of books that we can put together, we're going to take those and then look at what our Arawakan relatives are doing and then trying to piece together and formulate and create new ceremony that involves the pieces that we've been able to get or things that we collectively and conversations with people know are passed down or, you know, mindsets or beliefs about certain things and incorporating all of those things. And that's how we create new ceremony. But people who want to tell you that in this book, if you go to this page, it's written there, that, that is not true. Don't let anybody ever tell you that. And, you know, because it's just not. You're not going to find. There's no book anywhere that has like a full documented Taino ceremony. Only bits and pieces because the chroniclers writing this stuff, looking at it, didn't even know what they were looking at. They didn't even know what they were looking at. You know, they're looking at it through their Christian lens and writing about it and assuming what was happening. So, you know, creating ceremony and being in ceremony is one of the most beautiful things that you can experience when it is done the right way. And so there's a, there is a social aspect to reconnecting, and that's a lot of what we've been talking about, but there's also a very deeply spiritual aspect to reconnecting. And I know that that's something a lot of people really long for and look for, but it's also the way in which you will likely find a lot of, unfortunately, predators and where you need to be really mindful of what people are telling you is the truth. Also watch for people who mix different practices. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm a firm believer that you shouldn't be mixing practices. You know, if you're, if you're an eclectic um, practitioner and you pick a little bit of here and there, to do your own spirituality at home, that's one thing. But when you're going into ceremony with a group, if they're mm -hmm. mixing stuff, uh, I, would, mm -hmm. I would I would stay away from that. You yeah. Know? Especially in an in indigenous Taino practice. Because we're not saying that we're doing Mesa Blanca ceremony. We're not saying that we're doing Santeria or another, you know, subset of Espiritismo or an ATR or any of that you know, where there may be elephant, you know, 21 divisions, any of that stuff where there's aspects and different bringing in of saints and all of this different stuff. That's, that's not what we do. Don't let anyone tell you that that's what we do. If they're doing that, please find the exit because it's not, it ain't it. <laughs> and I think people sometimes yeah. think that the, the Santeria and practicing semiism or, or practicing a Taino faith are one and the same because of the, the mix in the cultures and they're not, you know? And so I, I've had people say, Oh, you're Taino, you practice Santeria. And it's like, Oh no, <laughs> no, I just, I mean, I, there are, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Continue. Like I said, I have a live, so I really don't mean to be interrupting. <laughs> That's okay. Please finish your thought. I was just going to say that, you know, I'm an, I'm an eclectic witch or bruja or whatever. So I don't practice semiism per se, but I do have an ancestral altar in my home that is specifically dedicated to my Taino ancestors. I don't put anything else on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, you shouldn't be mixing that. So, yeah, that's oh, sorry. Oh, well, I didn't want to, I know you were waiting to talk. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna add to the to the whole like we don't mix thing, you know, like like um Boyo just got done saying, you don't know, like there could be two spirits from two totally different practices that get along and you could put them on the same altar if you, you know, do the appropriate, you know, whatever um respective protocol for divination and whatnot is, you know, relevant, then you know, you ask them and they're like, Yeah, it's fine to put us on the same altar. And then you can have two spirits that are from the literal same practice that if you put them together, you're gonna have problems. They don't like each other. They they want their own spaces. And if you put them in the same space, 
that's gonna be like how dare you mm-hmm. how dare you not like give me my own house or my own space in your house you know and then there's a difference between an ancestral altar and a working altar you know you can have all your ancestors on one altar um most people it's not a problem like i said unless somebody totally hates somebody but um when it comes to a working altar that's something totally different and then again depending on your practice and your whatever path it is that you're on, there are certain things that kind of need to be in place for that working altar to, you know, do its thing. So um, you just, you, you gotta be real careful. And it's not to say that you as a mixed person cannot be eclectic. It's just that you can't just go mixing whatever you want, throwing mm-hmm. things into the same pot and mm-hmm. not expecting an explosion to, potentially happen Mm -hmm. for sure I'm just nodding my head and I think I think one of the I think we all had this example and we kind of laughed at it that that someone bring a singing bowl into ceremony (laughs) and they really singing bowl and really trying to sell it and and I, you know, I said, like, I have, I have, I own a singing bowl, but that, that doesn't come into ceremony. I just use it because, you know, I use it. It sounds nice. You know, I use it for other, for a different purpose. But, and, and, and even, and I will say this, that even, like, Elba said, if you uh, have family members that didn't get along, or there were bad relations, and you know that, right? Like, you have to, even on your ancestral altar, you need to, like, <laughs> you know, be mindful of that. And you can practice Santeria and, and, you know, Semiism. You can do these different things, but, you know, each one deserves their own respect and their own space because the way in which you are venerating or practicing will differ, you know, from practice to practice. And each practice deserves that honor and respect and attention from you and the care that goes into caring for that altar. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Cool. I don't have to separate family members on my my ancestral altar. Put one on this end, put the other one on that end. <laughs> I have had to do that. I have had to do that, yeah. Um, you know... And just, I was just looking, looking at our list again. Yeah, red flag. So I just think like, I feel like we've covered a lot. (laughs) I feel like we covered a lot, a lot, a lot. So I don't know if there are any like final points or whatever you guys want to make because it's 935 or if you want to open it up to questions in case there's any questions that people have or if you guys have any like final points before we move to questions or anything. I think we can move to questions on my end, at least. Elba looks frozen. She looks <laughs> stoic, so I think she's frozen. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Inaru, do you have anything else you want And we're back. I'm sorry, guys. My phone my phone died. Like, I had it plugged in, and somehow it still, it still died. And it's, a, it's letting me resume the live, como si nada. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Let me... Can y'all see and or hear me? I want to... I went to get a snack. <laughs> My phone didn't give me no warning. And I, I said, screw y'all, I'm done. I took a nap. <laughs> Looks like on your guys' end, like there's a vibe, but like nothing happening. <laughs> The chat was going, and everybody was flipping out. People came in and out. I don't know who's left to ask. Who I am so sorry. 
because I was like, y'all have questions, you better start typing them in the chat and maybe she'll make a video because I don't know what's happening. I mean, that's what I was thinking of doing was like doing a, a video real quick and being like, I'm so sorry, my internet and my phone and everything is trash. We're going to have a GoFundMe for, you know, get Edba, not shitty equipment. Um, and uh, I did say this to you. <laughs> Literally. But um, yeah, I was like, you know, worst comes to worst, I'll do a video, apologize and be like, y'all leave your questions in the comments and tag all you all you wonderful ladies, but um, I didn't know since we are all here now and everything's acting right for now. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, all the things. Did anybody have any questions? Silence. <laughs> We're doing pretty good despite all the technical issues that are definitely my fault. <laughs> look at Inaru so pretty and painting and doing her thing over there. Well, don't look at her no more because she said we can't. <laughs> Did y'all have any any questions about um you know generational trauma um or anything with regard to spirituality since that was kind of the topic we were on before my phone said um que se joda el <laughs> Can you all see my post? Yeah, I I can see that one. I saw I saw the hee hee. Um, um, and I'm not seeing anything above that, probably because my phone was being dumb. I don't know if you guys see previous, any questions from earlier. No, I told Darkborn said that they had a question, and I said, go ahead and, and ask. Dale, while you got us still here, because we were supposed up. to do 7 to 9.30, but since we technically started late, we can, you know... Unless anybody has to go. That was Elba's fault, too. <laughs> listen, Linda. Listen. <laughs> listen. It's not my fault. I mean, it's my fault, but it's not my fault. Okay? A bitch is broke. I'm just teasing I will repost you. it. Okay. Um, Please we'll do, do Dark Horn. In the Bronx on the 25th. That's Bobby Gonzalez's um, event in the Bronx. I know he got, excuse me, perate un momentito, how do you disappear from the freaking live and you come back with a Limbre de Coco and you don't have one, like, air mail <laughs> from New York? As soon as I went to, you know, as soon as the phone, like, died or whatever, my dad was like, mira, yo hice Limbre. <laughs> and I was like, yes, sir, I'm gonna grab one. No, no. De coco también. I see that. <laughs> Look at Inaru. She's like rude. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> rude, right? I'm stuck. You guys want some? It's got it's got my spit on it, but I'll, I'll yeah. I don't care about your spit. I want the libre de coco. That's how deep the the desire for the libre is. I'm like. <laughs> like oh, I see a. Very... She's like, wait a second. <laughs> I, 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 I was sorry. waiting for that question to come back. Yeah, I was waiting for him to I, I, I see a very important question. Is there a protocol we need to follow before contacting them? That's a very important question. But a protocol before contacting who? I'm sorry, hold on. I have to yell at a tiny person with hands in the air conditioner once. What are we talking about? Where did the question go? I swear I've seen the question. Ahora se me desapareció. Maybe contacting elders? I want to say they probably mean contact. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is contacting elders. Yeah. Let that's us know if we're off, Doc Bourne. I mean, it could be contacting various things, so. 
Well, we can. Um, I don't know. I was reckless when I was young. I was just like, I'm a message. And if you don't answer me, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. I mean, we can kind of like answer what we probably think that he, you know, like what we think as far as like, you know, well, as, we can go the gamut. Like, con let's let's talk about contacting elders or contacting a Yukiyeke or contacting Elba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do all the things you know because i'm sure i'm sure all the all those was going to come up anyway but you know we can start with elders and then if we don't hit specifically what darkborn was was asking then they can ideally clarify in the in the chat oh wait no not off we want to know what to do before we contact them again i'm assuming elders because that's oh. that's let's just go with that we'll run with that A dog. Who wants to? Well, go don't for everyone it? jump in at once. <laughs> well, I mean, you should. Go. You had the 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 luxury of a limbre. Your voice should be nice and you know not fart. <laughs> um, I I I mean, I think what y'all should go because I really wouldn't know as far as protocol. Like I said, I was reckless when I was reconnecting. I was just like. Who I, I'm going to reach out to whoever and if they don't got so, the spoons to deal with me or they don't want to answer, then fine. I'm just going to, you know. Oh, you want to go, Inaru? Go ahead. I was thinking um, now as as like, well, you can get it, right? Um, well, if you're, if you're contacting nations, um, for example, uh, if you're contacting the Lenape nation uh, or let's say the Nanticoke Lenny Lenape, right, of you know, New Jersey, right? You can't expect to talk to the chief right away because it is a governing body. It is a nation, right? So you have to respect it like that. It's not a group, per se, where you can just like, oh, I'm just going to talk to the director and so on and so forth, and it's not a big deal. So it's So in terms of protocol, like, no. Oh, if you don't get in contact with somebody that you feel that you want to talk to, let's say in, in Hiwiyawa's um, uh, case, like um, Kaksike George, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to call him and I'm going to, he might be doing something really like a lot of things, you know, he's in charge of Yuki Yeke, right? So he's like, you know, he's helping facilitate a lot of things, you know, maybe a VK or whatever, what have you. But you always have to remember, remember that some of these folks that are in certain roles, right, within the Yuki Yeke, they might be, um, you know, and they might get back to you when, um, you know, they can, you know, so you have to be mindful of people's, uh, you know, capacity again. And, and again, it's, it's. Thank you for that question, because it is that type of like if we think about protocol, like, you know, just kind of think if there's like maybe somebody that like maybe contact the BAK or contact the group, but don't think that you might be able to. I'm going to call the Kasika right now. You know, like it might not happen that quickly <laughs> that way for you. I hope that. Helps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know yeah. some. I mean, some, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, um, I just saw like, you know, the chain of command. And and you know, I don't want I don't wanna give folks the idea or think that there is like this top down thing. It's not. There is we don't live like in a pyramid society. We live like more of think of a spiral. So it's just that that, that person that might be in closer to the center of the spiral might be spinning faster and might have a lot more like things to do like and more responsibilities so you have to think of it that way so instead of like a top-down thing so we have to decolonize for not thinking too but that's a that's a that's a good uh you know that's a good you know analogy, um, analogy. all right i'm up <laughs> exit stage left <laughs> so I agree with Inaru. It, I mean, like, it definitely depends if you are looking to contact someone 
um, from a Yuka Yeke that maybe you are inquiring about and maybe you have some kind of affiliation with already and you know some people versus being completely on the outside. My advice is always to be respectful, to be considerate. If you're reaching out, you know, via social media, because that's how you've seen them, like the way you find all uh TikToks or anything like that. Generally, I always say that you should, you know, uh, no, this live is never focused on one Yuka Yeke. That's correct. Shenanigans and coffee. Um, that you should, um, you know, introduce yourself. Say, I am a reconnecting Taino. I am new to this. Or I have a question. Like, be, And if you have a specific question, ask your question very precisely and clearly. Because um, I can't tell you how many times I sometimes get questions. And uh, we had a situation the other day where someone wanted information about something. And it was really unclear if they wanted to just know what it was or if they were looking at the name for it in a different language or something like that. And then it creates like a lot of, you know, running around like a chicken without a head because you're like, well, what is it you want to know? And if I don't know it, you know, we're likely to start reaching out to each other to say, hey, someone's asking this question. I'm kind of familiar, you know, so like my advice is to if you're going to ask a question, be considerate of the person's time by being really clear and concise with your question or whatever it is specifically that you're wanting to know and introducing yourself. And I always recommend that if you are newer and reconnecting to include that in like an introductory message, because it also kind of alerts the reader to where you are. So hopefully they can meet you where you are instead of assuming that you're not like, why don't you know what, whatever they're asking? You know what I mean? Um, so that, that's my advice to be respectful. And when you ask something to ask a, um, concise question and kind of remember that everything operates really from a space of reciprocity that if you are asking for something and asking them to give you something you should be giving something in return and that accounts as your time your energy a a token or something or whatever because it is the act of reciprocity that you are requesting something of them and they are giving you and you know that that's a, a very big thing within indigenous community, the acts of reciprocity. I hope that makes sense. That does make sense. Did you have... I think she was going to ask you if you had anything to say, Bohio, because I, I don't know <laughs> she was frozen again. Um, no, actually, because I, I'm not... I, I know people sometimes contact me and ask me, you know, do I know of a group that they can join or do I know who to contact at this group? And usually what I do is I will contact the person first and pass mm. that information on, yeah. um, you know, so I'm available. Hello. <laughs> so I'm using my card. <laughs> actually be my phone even though i thought it was i am so sorry guys are we frozen again or can you hear me i can hear you oh okay all right so i'm gonna bow out because i gotta put this little monster to bed this one right here because if I leave it up to him, he'll be up all night. Um, but it was a pleasure. It was an honor <laughs> to I'm do so this. Sorry. I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's all right. It happens. <laughs> but, I was saying. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you guys and everybody that was participating in this. It was awesome. So have a good night. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's thank what I was going to say. We appreciate you and thank you for your wisdom, your insight, and most importantly, your time. Thank you for being here with us and you know, being willing to share. So I will talk to you guys later. And then if anybody has questions, they can reach me at the Bohio. <laughs> Not here because my husband don't know how to use TikTok either. <laughs> I have videos. Which I have, so it's like, how do I find them? If you 
Boyo trading post, but if you can't like remember or you were like, I don't whatever, you can just go on my page and some of the more recent videos have both uh, trading posts and water video uh tag posts. All right. Awesome. All right guys, good night. Bye. 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 So yeah, I kept saying in the chat that if anyone had any questions to let us know or I was going to try to get them so we could like uh, make a elbow could make a video or something. I don't know, depending what it was. And uh, the other thing is if you're looking for me, <laughs> I, I'm i actually Water Vixen. I'm I'm in in here somewhere. And just if I start liking, I'll probably pop up. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. If you want to follow me, huh? Then maybe if you leave a comment, it'll your your account oh, no. pop up. It came up when you like too. It comes up. If I'm there now. Oh, I knew that. So I I kept liking the live, so I kept I would keep popping up because I'm doing it on on this one now. Uh, I don't know if I, yeah. So I was saying I don't know if anyone else has any other questions or anything. I know that like. Were you guys able to answer the questions of um? you know, dark born. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, we, I think we did. And I told, I told dark born that, um, you know, as long as they, you know, kind of were respectful and all of that. And the thing would, you know, as I said, with reciprocity, then they should be okay. And if they had any more questions, they could reach out if they needed any other advice. Yeah. Cause I mean, I don't have, um, particular people that, rather you go to to um you know kind of answer questions or whatever mm -hmm. um, don't know who that is then you ask some a member of the tribe and they'll let you know mm -hmm. so i don't know if anyone has any other questions or anything for us i know like everyone started to like trying to figure it out and everyone dipped i don't even think shenanigans is here i don't even think she came back for our mess well, I mean, I don't, I don't blame them because I, if as a as a viewer, I'd have been like, man, this live keeps crashing. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm just wanting to know I if anyone. If my phone dies again, because it's it's. I don't know. Do that. Um, there was a mention. A oh, Jasmine question. And, um, I know. Oh, okay. Uh, well, while she types her question, I just wanted to mention that yuka yeke, yuka yeke no day are not like the same as the yuka yeke no back in the day, just because they have mm -hmm. the same name. Like it's not like this yuka yeke from back in the day has. Con continued on until today like that is a completely new mm -hmm. that thing that people um weren't already aware of but um i didn't know if you wanted to go and type your question at jasmine and we will be glad to answer to the best of our of our ability before we before we go for real this time Hobo was just playing with everyone's emotions. So, uh, I'm so, so sorry, you guys. Going to my first powwow in October, and I've started working on my own regalia. Okay, cool, cool. Can I use feathers as in my box? What kind of feathers? There are people with specific uh, titles that you might want That's to. I mean, perhaps, yeah. yeah. That's what we should just go ahead and touch on is like what feathers are kind of reserved for certain folks. That way yeah. they know like it's good to go for your life. 
Essentially, birds of prey are reserved for Mexicano because of the fact that um, of what they represent. So that would mean an eagle feather, a owl feather, and I believe vulture is the other one primarily that um, if you are not a Bejique or recognized as someone or been gifted them as a recognition of your healing gifts, you should not be utilizing those feathers. But if you had like a macaw feather or hawk feather, um, you know, or if you have like a, I don't know, what's another big bird that people have sometimes in their home? Like a cockatiel or, or something like that and they drop the tail feather or something and you want you want to use it I don't know I'm just you know thinking oh uh, the limbre de coco I know so as long as they are not um I wouldn't use an eagle feather you could use a dove feather the eagle feather you should not use. The fact that you found it, it, it is meant for you. You can have it, but you should not be wearing it as part of your regalia because that would be a symbol of you representing a position that uh, I don't believe that you hold. I could be wrong, but if you're asking that question, I'm assuming that that you don't. And also uh, keep in mind that in certain states, um, it varies state to state, but in certain states, Certain states, certain feathers are illegal to yeah. have. So you want to look that up and make sure that you're not like flaunting your, you know, a feather that, you know, for that state, you could get fined for having. Even if you did, even if you found it on the ground, you just so happen to, you know, have mm -hmm. it, um, you know, so just be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point because we do know people who have, uh, done that and and gotten fines or gotten in trouble with like wild wildlife or like animal the forest whatever for something or having them for them being in their possession. I want to say it's different if you're like a member of a federally recognized tribe, but because Taino are not, right? You know that's not yeah. something. Yes. Are covered. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you are in a federally recognized tribe, that does not apply to you because you will have your tribal registration card and you can show proof and say that it's part of your religious practice and it is allowed. But because we're not federally recognized, you need to adhere to the same rules. At least publicly, okay. so you know. <laughs> okay. No, I don't know for sure with regard to Maryland, but I'm sure that is a... Google search a way to make sure that, you know, um, you're not going to catch any, you know, crap for having a feather. If you go to TainoLibrary.org or Linktree slash Taino Library, I have a list of artisans that, um, you know, people who are well known in the community, they're established, you know, they're not, um, you know, scammers or people who are going to just take your money and never send you an item. Like, they're they're solid. They're good artists. They're good people. And, you know, go support them. Yes, Boyo Trading Post and one of our regular hosts, uh, Inaru, they're both, they're both artisans. Um, Boyo Trading mm -hmm. has an Etsy page. Um, mm -hmm. But you can also, like, if you're trying to get the extra fees that Etsy is going to kind of force Boi or trading post to add to an item. Uh, you can also just message her directly and she will tell you the price and y'all can like, you know, do like a PayPal type situation directly instead of having to go through Etsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other question? I don't know if you're ready to go. Okay, I'm so sorry. Like... The drum. I know I had to wet it. It was out of tune before. It was really flat. Oh, I know I gotta go through my my headdress and I yeah, it's still a little flat. Yes, parrot feathers. Parrot feathers are feathers 
um, that you would typically find. Huh? I said they're super tradish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Those are feathers you would typically find in a headdress. No. I'm going to say no flat out because I don't know which ceremonial tools you are talking about. But I will say that um, anything that you use in ceremony should be kept in ceremony. I own several rattles. And there is one that I use in ceremony, and I don't show that one ever. There are other ones that I will that I will show or that I take out with me um, publicly. But generally, those things you should not share. You can explain, but I'm just saying, like as a as a rule of thumb, broad spectrum across the 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 board. But if you have something specifically. Um, I don't know what ceremonial item you're talking about. You can, you know, explain more and we can talk about it uh, with more clarity if we know what it is. But um, even something like um, an amaraka, which is different than a, than a maraca, like you will see some behike allow them to be photographed. They really should not be photographed. Um I mean, that that's my take. I don't know if Elba has a different thing to say but I I I agree I like headdresses there you know there are people who have multiple headdresses like one is for public mm -hmm. exhibition and for photo ops and you know TikTok videos or whatever you want to use them for and then there's a there's a separate headdress that is only for ceremony mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a medicine pouch or something like that, that, you know, you were in ceremony and there's some some remnants from like the medicines or something used um, and you've put in that pouch, you can wear that pouch and carry it with you. That doesn't have to be like, um, doesn't have to be a secret because that would be the point of having the medicine, the medicine pouch. So that that's totally okay. Oh, but you have to make me go make some of those. I just want to make sure I don't overstep or dish anyone as I put together my my regalia. Yeah, yeah, your medicine. So yeah, you're fine with the if that's what it is, like the medicine pouch. You're you're fine with that. That's I mean, like it's not because it wasn't used in the ceremony. It's not, it came of the ceremony. It wasn't used in the ceremony. I hope that that makes sense. There's a difference. Um, Asking the questions is, is how you go about doing things, you know, respectfully. If you don't know for sure, ask. And that's another, that's another thing going back to red flags that we were talking about earlier. If somebody has a problem with you asking questions, they don't mm -hmm. like it that you're questioning them stuff like that, you know, that's a red flag. Or being willing to admit that you don't know, like I was telling over the other day that I confused the dates of something the last time we went live and I knew the day, but I was mixing up the year. And I was like, you know, being able to just say, oh yeah, that, you know, you're right. I, I, I confused that. That's okay. You know, like be willing to be humble enough to be wrong because you can't know everything. You can't like, you know? That is specific. To, um, I can't remember the tribe off the top of my head. Black line is okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kay. Do I have it backwards? I think the black line is okay because I, mo I see everyone doing it. And another common one you see is like with the uh, with eyes painted red um or like certain markings on the on the cheek or if you find like um or even the other thing you could even make your own thing is like if you want to do a petroglyph like a different petroglyph on each each cheek and be original if you're that you know artsy that's also another way to go if you don't want to do like lines or anything and you're not sure what they're associated with you could always draw like um you know simple petroglyphs like the ones for water or the Milky Way or the Koki, something like that. You could always do that. 
people would I mean, that's really into like, patterns and stuff like that. But um, I would definitely caution against just using any old symbol out there because, mm-hmm. you know, it to know the meaning of what you're putting on your body. Right. Which is why I'm saying, like, if you're not completely sure, I would default to like a simple one of the simple petroglyphs if you really want to put something on you um, or or somehow do like, you know, red. Eye, like I said, the red eyes, red, the painting across the eyes is very, very common or a line across. Um, yeah. Without, you know, causing too much controversy. <laughs> And you can also look at the tribes like the, the Yuka Yakeno to look at what you might to avoid doing because there are certain, you know, patterns and whatnot Yuka specific. So if mm-hmm. you're not a Yuka Yake out of out of respect, you would not use whatever designs the the tribe is using whenever they do, you know, whenever mm-hmm. they go into or they uh, you know, dance how or or what have you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really common. But that's specific to any tribe. I don't think so, because a lot of us do the red eyes, because it's really common with other people, like in the Amazonian era, area, even I think some of the, in that space over there, like, you know, I'm trying to think of some of the photos that I've seen, like, from this this um from this other person Berlinda, I think they have done that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, as far as I understand it, uh, that's not tribe specific. I altered that. That is a good practice. Um, yeah. A lot of people. Um, there are just certain things you don't want to you don't want to show publicly. Want to take pictures mm-hmm. of, and an altar space is definitely one of those mm-hmm. things. I just want to say, like, if if there's someone that you are really close with or something, and you want to maybe like share it with them or something like that, you know, that's a little different than like posting it on Instagram or Facebook or any of that, where it's widely open to the public. You would be sharing it with one person who. Um, you feel is is trusted so I don't want you to feel like if you're really excited about something and you have um, a really close relation um, I don't know like like how Elba is over here with me you know if I wanted to show her something that would be different than like if I'm gonna go post it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever because now I'm opening it opening it energetically for anyone who's looking at it to see and that's also why you don't want to post pictures of your altar. I know a lot of people get excited and they do it. You need to remember your altar is a form of two-way communication. It is used to communicate with you and you communicate. Um, you use it to communicate. Sorry, Elba, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, no, I was just waiting. My special, my special self has at a certain time. And, you know, posted. Her, um, granted, it was a, it was like an older, it was like a, like my altar had been updated since that picture was taken, but even still, like it probably wasn't the best idea to do. So, yeah. That's for you, Oba. Um, before we get back to Jasmine's question, Justin said he's, uh, I've seen some of the design on the cheeks. Yes. I, there are some that are doing that, uh, there are some people that have newly added this design as part of their regalia, and it, it is meant to be yukayeke specific. Certain ones um, that are doing that, and then there are some that, like we were talking about, that you may see lines across or or whatever. So I would be very careful with that um, because I do know that there are some yukayeke that um, are de- making designs to be on the cheek that are specific for them. Sure. 
You're coming in and out a little bit. Um, okay. Daino on those islands last. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you were coming what in happened? and out. You're, you were coming in and out, but now you're okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I was gonna. I was referring to Jasmine's question more about the Luku Kairi and Sibune Taino. Um, they, I am not as well versed on Taino. That is actually a goal of mine is to get more information about Taino that are not uh, considered like um, the the like big quote unquote, for lack of a better way to put it. Because like, as I'm sure you have encountered, there is not as much information about some of these other groups of Taino people. So mm. um, it's kind of on to to figure that out and, you know, kind of encourage the academics that we know who are not going to do things from a colonial perspective. Help us make those strides. Um, yeah. Exactly. Like there's, you know, just as we've had to fight to um, even just be recognized, we have to fight for, for example, um, a lot of people like to discredit that, you know, in Haiti, you know, like, oh, they're, they're in the, they're all in the DR. There's none in Haiti. And that's not true. You know what I'm saying? But because there's less research and stuff like that, that was done in Haiti, it makes it easier for people to discredit them. And of course, it's up to us to be like, I don't think so. You know, what we're not going to do is that, you know, and like I said, encourage our, our leaders and um, academics that, that are willing to work with us to, you know, help us get more information and, and do research, ethical research, because, you know, there's plenty of stealing of artifacts and stuff like that. We are not trying to encourage that anywhere, but um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm going to... I do have some books that I, I have like set aside to read that I haven't gotten to yet, but um, I'll put them higher up on my priority list so that I can, um, so I can answer that question. Cause you are, uh, you are Luku Kaidi, right? You are in the Bahamas or from the Bahamas, if I'm not mistaken. Uh oh, my sound went out. What happened? Oh, you that was yourself. me. That was me for for my pendeja. So, because I I muted myself to yell at Logan, and then I forgot that I like. You were still muted. muted. Yeah, I was like, oh, I was answering my... you. I was saying yeah. yes. I remember from the last live that Jasmine said that they were. Luku Kaidi that they said that they were from the bah the Bahamas. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's okay. definitely for Elba. It's not me. I'm. I don't. I don't really make videos. I hide from the world. She basically had to bribe me to come do this with her. Y'all tell her she needs to make more videos. She had to bribe me to come do this. I don't know what happened. You froze. I don't hear you. Well, out here that they are a Mexican or not correcting people when they make that assumption. And literally, the only Mexican or Bohuti or, or spiritual person, at least for Hibayagua, that is on TikTok is this woman right here. Anybody else is playing you or not being completely transparent. But yeah, I know it's getting late and you got Loki over there probably gonna keep you up forever but you know <laughs> that's per usual but um I know you probably got stuff to do and want to wind down and maybe try to get some rest I have knowledge on older tradition the Kukari culture but when it comes to modern knowledge oh you probably hit like a roadblock that that is that I was at that point before I, I found other members in community I'm learning from my classic Taino elders. That I mean, that's that's really the best way to go. Um, unless you have contact with folks that are in the Bahamas, but they're probably um, dealing with a lot of the same things we are, which is trying to, you know, divorce 
what they were taught was, you know, British or some other colonial thing from what is actually a Taino practice. And then, of course, there are, you know, African practices there as well that are very similar. That's why our people got on so good. And that's why the mix happened. Um, rather, other than, you know, being forced together due to colonization. But, you know, there's so many similarities. You know, there are instruments that people want to say are Taino and they're not. They're African. There are things that people want to say are African and they're not. They're Taino. So it can get real confusing real quick. It's hard. It's really hard. And that's why I was saying earlier, like, it's really important that we all kind of just come together. And then, um, you know, it's harder to ignore a crowd. For you know, to use a common figure of speech that I wager most people are familiar with. Um, so ideally, we can you know find more information as far as books, get on the same page with each other, and then you know reach out to people in the Bahamas and be like, "What do y'all need backup for? What do y'all need help with? How can we?" Um, help y'all progress on this island because unfortunately the Taino is diaspora. We are all in different colonial countries so there are different laws and different ways that things were documented and it gets real 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 confusing. A lot of things are Taino. He thinks comes from Africa or Colon, he says. Well I mean I know a lot of people may not appreciate my saying this but I would not be surprised if there were African folks that came, you know what I mean. I don't, I don't knock that idea. Um, the fact the that they, they, yeah, I would, I definitely <laughs> don't knock the idea of people having come and visited and then just fallen in love with the island or fallen in love with someone on the island and stayed and and all of that. You know, um, as far as like large settlements and stuff like that, my understanding is there is no proof. But having come, visited, and then assimilated into the indigenous cultures that were already there yes i believe that happened i don't i don't doubt that that i mean if vikings got here before before columbus then why wouldn't why wouldn't africans have i mean to that to that degree you know the thing that most bipoc cultures and everything suffer is the fact that people forget that Indigenous cultures around the world knew what the universe looked like and have symbols for it, viewing the Milky Way from the top before Galileo ever looked to the sky. That, you know, Lakota people are the star people, that they are... Which group? Do you remember who, who were the cloud people? I, I don't... It's... I, I, uh, I can't... It's, 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 it's falling out of my head right now. But, you know, like the cloud people and there's a reason that all of these things existed and like don't forget like northern africans were doing algebra and we're doing all kinds of math and doing all kinds of other things and looking at the stars and utilizing things and inventing things and we're sailing oh yeah there's a lot of things that they want to attribute you know to to greek which of course they have their you know, things and discoveries and whatnot to be proud of. But there are a lot of things that, like I said, get conflated um, with a different culture. Mm -hmm. And it's like, y'all aren't paying enough respect to the people who like really were the originators of it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like so much, and like even writing systems, like writing system is given credit to the Greeks, but the Greeks were not originally like first peoples with um, writing. And, and, you know, like there were, it was going on for a long time before. Mm -hmm. so. And then what would you even qualify as a writing system? Because if to the colonizer, it's not considered a writing system that it wouldn't even be, con you know, it wouldn't even be something they would mention, you mm -hmm. know, because if there's the argument that our petroglyphs are a writing system, you know, that we told stories, not in books, but via our semi and, that's something a colonizer would completely look over. At least, you know, from that perspective. Honestly, I mean, yeah, um, most indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. actually, Jasmine, almost all 
like um the we will t- like the our actual symbol for the Milky Way is two the people confuse it, but it's the one that has two spirals in it, and but the tails go in different directions. If you look at pictures of the Milky Way from the top, that's exactly what it looks like. These swirls like that. Um and most the Turtle of the- Island called Turtle yeah. Island because from the sky view that's what yep. it looks like. That's a really good one. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of things like that and it just speaks to the fact of um you know what I'm talking about is that for millennia indigenous people held knowledge um you know for things that white people like to think didn't exist until you know they stumbled upon it all after or they the didn't understand it so they discredited it and now that they're now that we're at a place where some of those things are making sense they're like oh look, I can't believe these indigenous people knew all of these things already. And it's like, what we've been telling you, mm-hmm. like, y'all just right. didn't want to listen. And I, cause I think one of the most powerful things that, you know, I always say, and I know you believe this too, is that really spirituality existed long before science did. And all the sciences were invented to help explain spirituality. That spirituality is actually a form of science or science is a form of spirituality rather because it was invented in order to understand the phenomena that they could not explain. I know people sometimes want to be like, oh, science is so complicated or whatever. And it's like, well, compared to the way our indigenous ancestors, you know, viewed and explained things, then it's actually quite simple. You know, it's, it's like spirituality for dummies because you can't, you You can't wrap your head around it from a spiritual perspective. So you had to have a more mundane explanation for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all I've got to say. I don't know if anyone has any other questions, because I promise you, Elba and I, we could keep going forever. Yeah, I'm I'm actually, I actually got to go because I know like my parents probably want to start getting ready for bed and I'm like zapping all their internet and I do want to at least talk to them for a little bit before I'm like, hi, I came to use your internet now. Bye, I'm going to go home. (laughs) Yeah, so I just, yeah, but because we want, I just wanted to make sure we at least answered a couple of questions because we kept having those issues. But, you know, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being here and the couple of people who stayed to ask questions, you know, really, really appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. Because um, you guys are the ones that we're doing these lives for. I mean, because can I be like cutting it up all day, pretty much? So <laughs> we're really here for you guys. So um, and again, if you cu- if if after this live is over, you come up with a question, you're like, darn it, I forgot to ask. Uh, shoot us a DM, comment on a video. Um, I also like I, like I said, if we're not mutuals. TikTok is not going to let you message me, but my Instagram is linked, so you can message me that way as well. Uh, Tinolibrary at gmail.com. Like, we are reachable. We are reachable. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much. You guys all have a good night. Was that a question on there? Okay. Okay. I will do that. But, oh, all right, Storm. Rude. You know, really almost knocked everything over. But thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>